one thing I'm going to work on with this one is not saying um as much and not saying um, like. Like. Thank you. So we're going to work on that. Um, okay. Oh, I just did it. <laughs> Um, I <laughs> <laughs> now you're just more conscious about I it. I am uh, <clears throat> consciousness. <laughs> I feel like that's how I would start a podcast with the two of you. Okay, let's do some introductions. You have three sentences, and for someone that you've never met before, what are your three sentences to describe who you are? <laughs> Dar, you start. <laughs> oh, I was staring at him. I know you were at first. <laughs> Let's get vulnerable. <laughs> no, this week has been too vulnerable already. Um, I'm Darlene, and I am a wife, a mom, and a nurse, and just figuring out life continuously. <laughs> My name is Jason, and I am Darlene's husband and small, newly small business owner. Mm-hmm. And yeah, stay at home dad, other than the small business. Yes, good things. Okay, so I think it's interesting. Okay, we can start with this. Um, when you when you pick out three sentences to describe yourself, what what were you thinking about? Like the easiest thing. <laughs> <laughs> like a blanket statement is what I was thinking of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's hard to go into depth. In three sentences. Right. And I don't know if mine was three sentences, but <laughs> no. I was just saying what I was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, like, um, kind of, like, you're, I feel like when we go to describe ourselves, we often go into uh, the different roles that we have mm-hmm. and the different uh, parts that we play in the game um, instead of, describing who we are or I wonder if that's conditional though depending on what situation you are in I think it's more the labels are the easiest things to grasp to as well as people to identify with as far as because they don't know me as well as trying to describe yourself in three sentences is kind of hard you don't get the essence of me right thing right but if I know kind of what you do then I can paint my picture a little bit and then go from there Right. Right. Interesting. (laughs) It's a good starter to (laughs) unfold what your life is. Right. Mm -hmm. So when I think about the two of you, um, so when I first moved out here, um, Dar was one of the first people that I had, like, really meaningful conversation with. (laughs) At three in the morning. At three in the morning. (laughs) Um, And then that kind of has been the theme for um, the purpose of this podcast is just uh, recording some of those conversations because I think it's interesting to look look back on at what you are worried about, what you are working on, uh, what type of, how you identified yourself at different phases in life. Mm -hmm. Um, And one of the biggest things that I have gathered from the two of you is... um, how to be yourself within a family unit and a couple or a relationship and also within kind of uh, these societal like constraints to an extent but also um, like so how to keep that individuality amidst all of these different uh, identifiers or uh, roles that we play in life so <laughs> did that make sense was that kind of did yeah, that make sense no it totally does and we okay. get that a lot do you we yeah. do um yeah. um i would say like your sister probably says that a lot as far as like our relationship with a lot of the other people because um but i think it's more because we grew up together and we've definitely had our challenges but since i've known jason since i'm six i was 16 years old and he was 17 and so when we would change we kind of grew together like a tree I guess and so it was either we were not established in our who we were Mm -hmm. when um we came together Mm -hmm. so as far as like with dating we were still kids 
and then we just kind of grew up together. Yeah, we were like best friends. Like we spent, I mean, all the time together. <laughs> like if we weren't at work, school or working, like it was together. Mm-hmm. Right. And then, and then when you became parents, though, how, because I feel like you guys do it a lot different than a lot of people. Or do you not feel like that? <laughs> I think we, I think it's more our situation we're in, because we were right. able to afford having uh, Jason be home all mm-hmm. the time with the girls, um, instead of bringing them to daycare or mm-hmm. Like, that was definitely babysitter. something from the beginning, <clears throat> even before I lost my job, we didn't want someone else raising our kid like a babysitter or, or anything right um because yeah. so we that, both of us didn't have like all of our parents worked growing up so it was kind of right. so when you when you didn't have like that road map like that traditional road map how do you know or how have you navigated which way you wanted to go i don't think we actually chose it i think it yeah. just kind of happened and um it was either Jason was going to find another job that was going to pay for daycare or he was just going to stay home okay. and that we were just going, like, it was just, it was a quick decision. Right. Yeah. Cause just, I have, I lost my job like two right. weeks after she was found we out she was pregnant. pregnant. So oh, it was geez. like, uh, <laughs> yeah, we're either gonna, right. So it was either like he was going to find another job that he wasn't going to be happy at, or we were just going to figure it out. And we actually had, Put in place like a financial plan prior to that yeah which had just like we did the dave the dave ramsey and it fell into place i mean probably six months before we yeah. got pregnant like we had gotten all debt free other than our house but um and had we not done that there's no way we would have been able to do this lifestyle mm-hmm. and well i guess i know your lifestyle you guys should probably <laughs> tell people what that is so. And I'll fill in what you don't fill in. <laughs> <laughs> you can do use more than three sentences. Okay. <laughs> so I work as a nurse um, full time. Well, now it will be full time. Um, and mm-hmm. it's the job is just three, three shifts a week. And then the other time is just free time. And it's been really nice to actually have the flexibility in that. <clears throat> and Jason just stays home and he's with the girls and I mean when I'm off I'm also there too it's not just like this handoff like now it's your turn to be the parent it's like we're together we're together so I don't know it's and then we I mean that's how it started out was you were Mm full-time and then I just stayed home with the with our first child uh Layla and um yeah we moved downtown and just to get closer to her work and I was training for mountain bike racing and we were way too far from the mountain so I was traveling across town all the time to go train and so we moved downtown to get closer to that and ended up moving across the street from her work basically and got um, after our second child we decided to uh, I've always been interested in tiny houses so and I never thought of a way of building one myself or anything it, that had never dawned on me but um after i ended up getting a full-time job and it didn't work out. it didn't, didn't work out with <laughs> we, so we went back into retirement <laughs> yes <laughs> but during that last um six months of that job um we, we started kicking around the idea of building a tiny house in our backyard for airbnb and possibly future retirement for the two of us because we have intentions of traveling more and not really needing a big house once the girls are off on their own. So we built that yeah. and and the schedule for even me and I had dropped down to part time for to accommodate the full time, but it was more it was it's we hard. We just weren't together anymore. Yeah, it was just hard. And we were so, always coming and going. Right, and so we had to make a choice between the money and our family, and so we chose the, our family or. He chose his fam- our family, and so now we are. But we needed, we definitely wanted some more income yeah. to, that we didn't have to work too much for. So mm-hmm. I took a season off of racing and um, built the tiny home. Yeah, built the tiny home, <laughs> and mm-hmm. that's been a pretty good success so far. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, how did you deal with um, the leap of building a tiny home and the stresses of? 
So, like, I feel like a lot of times once you have, I don't, I don't know this because I don't have kids, <laughs> but, like, once kids get into the picture, I feel like a lot of parents, uh, like, stall out on things that they're passionate about because there's a risk that if it goes badly, then you're jeopardizing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Is no. that is that a fear? or? I think it was more, for me it was, and it, I think it was the loss of, of his income and now how you're going to make up for it, but I think... Our girls, especially Layla, who's older, she can feel the energy. And mm-hmm. if we're not really into something or if we're just, like, coasting, then right. she feels it. And she kind of calls it out sometimes. <laughs> and so <laughs> so she was really stoked about the, the possibility of it. And mm-hmm. I think it was just kind of you got to take the leap to actually make something happen. And, yeah. I mean, that's what we did when we were first pregnant. We took the leap of stay at home and I would be yeah. the breadwinner quote unquote <laughs> but I think she kind of, if we do it for them happiness right. isn't always about the money and right. we kind of right. realize that right right and she's before. kind of a different she's she's a unique nine-year-old where she knows um like the, she's not a conformist of any means of how mm-hmm. things were like for a while there she wanted to live in a van and be a farmer <laughs> whereas like when we were that age and if i were to say that yeah. if i were to have said that they'd be like oh my gosh something's wrong yeah, but so she like college and get a career and right. she's like oh, i can do whatever i want if i want to be a farmer because i try and instill that in her right. like you don't have to go the path right. of college and mm-hmm. do that. that if that's not what makes you happy then right. there's other ways to make money right so do you feel like prior to having your family were you people that individually jumped or jumped as a couple and or was it has it been something that you've realized like happiness doesn't happiness for you as like individual people isn't necessarily the traditional route or or did that kind of happen recently I think it helped me it wasn't when we first got married it wasn't like that for sure we were definitely money hungry and Mm -hmm. We, well, we came in, like, when we got married, we both had new jobs, and we're making a pretty good money right. as a couple, and so it was like, we were spending, spending it, it like, yeah. <laughs> having fun. And, and, like, the debt thing, and I think realizing it when we were doing the Dave Ramsey thing and seeing how much money our fund had accumulated, it was just, like, kind yeah. of like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, there's cheaper, cheaper ways to have fun, but <laughs> I think... For the happiness part, I think it's... We kind of grew, like, back then it was, that was our happiness, was spending money and, like, um, but now, like, we have our, she likes yoga and running and Mm -hmm. I do the mountain biking and it is expensive, but it's not, like, you got to spend money all the time to go have fun with it. Like, you you buy your, like, for me, it's, Mm -hmm. you buy the mountain bike and then Mm -hmm. you're good for however long. Right. So... I think it's more like a sustainable happiness is what we're trying to Mm -hmm. express and show our daughters Um, because it is kind of hard or disheartening when you see other people who just keep accumulating and they're truly not happy and Mm -hmm. so we just want them to know that we don't want to throw money at them and that's the fun like go buy this and go spend money here or Mm -hmm. do that like let's find stuff to do that's more meaningful than Mm -hmm. just throwing money at it right but we, it's more within reason. It's not like, I think for Christmas she asked for, like, something ridiculous. And I was just like, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's going to bring you happiness for just a little bit. But I think. Yeah. We're more about, it. we're trying to be more about experiences, experiences as much experiences. as possible. But It's hard. Do you, but do you feel like, was there, like, a moment when you had that switch from, you know, hey, we got this traditional, like, good jobs, good money flow going. And then now we're going to start a family and you guys kind of did like a it sounds like a kind of a 180 a little bit like let's be more family more experience focused versus doing this traditional tra- trajectory well we uh, had or, like we, we had forced. always want yeah we were kind of forced into it but we <laughs> oh, okay. like i said we That's didn't right. <laughs> we didn't want yeah to have a babysitter or anything we didn't right. want to ship them off to Mm-hmm. Uh, play school or anything like that like I I really wanted to raise our kids right, um, right. Okay. feed them food that we wanted and mm-hmm. like just mm-hmm. give I them that life more when we decided to move downtown and we also 
during that time we were vegan also <laughs> so we were kind of like outside the norm on that side of town mm-hmm. anyways and so I feel like that was during the time like we were watching more documentaries that mm-hmm. was more outsider of ourselves and I yeah. think that's when we truly made the switch I feel like mm-hmm. and just more into like learning about health and mm-hmm. stuff like that that kind of is leading us down that path yeah. or started leading us down that path but right. before it was we were too busy just having fun and right. spending money that we weren't sitting at home and kind of talking like, about these things yeah. and mm-hmm. like a quick fix happiness and right. like not really thinking about what we were eating yeah. or what we were doing or the consequences of all of that we mm-hmm. were we didn't really think about that until i i want to say she was pretty young when we started doing that yeah it was probably stuff. like two or three yeah was there, like, anybody in particular that, because I know we all listen to Joe Rogan a little bit. <laughs> was no, Joe that Rogan was, yeah. No, that the was source. way, this is way before Joe right. Rogan. Okay. Yeah, this is, like, ritual, I think. Ritual, we had listened to a lot. Yeah. Because we, we were vegan. And we right. But I wasn't even podcasting until, or listening to podcasts until my coach at the time was, I was uh, writing tons of like 20 to 25 hours a week and listening to music just got extremely old and made your right. rides super long so he told me to find some uh podcasts so that was that was probably the year before we had moved downtown i would say mm-hmm. and i think we all we both started getting really deep into our sport i guess like yeah. i started running a lot more you started biking a lot and then making friends in that kind of community i feel like when you have friends that are active like that, they also have a, a mm. different mindset of what the norm yeah. is as well. And yeah. you seek out health. I think when you're when you're doing sports and stuff right. like that, you right. you tend. I know they've been showing that like you eat healthier, like right. you you seek out health healthier options when you're right because you have more to be able fit. To compete. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Speaking of which, I signed up today <laughs> for the GoPro. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. nice. So committed. you have to yes, commit it. <laughs> Start running so up hills. <laughs> I oh, no, we I signed, up signed up right oh, when did? it opened. Yeah. Oh, good. February okay. 1st, we were That's the first. <laughs> um, so I also, I listened to this actually by Rich Roll today. <laughs> <laughs> this podcast called, it was about uh, the alter ego effect. Uh, I don't know if you guys have listened to that one yet. And the podcast is basically about when you're in these different uh, like situations and like the hat that you put on. Mm. Uh, the type of person that you want to be in that role, uh, you create an alter ego for that. Mm -hmm. So, like, for example, this podcast, it makes me really nervous to do this, but I love it, and it, like, or it makes me excited. So it's something that I want to do because that's what you're supposed to do is the things that excite you and make Mm -hmm. you nervous, right? Um, So you're supposed to think of a person, though, that you would like to be like in that situation. Oh, I see. So then you're kind of embodying like those characteristics versus things that you might be like self-conscious of or uh, might make you insecure in this situation um but like like you do it in your own way though yeah so like each person has like like an area where you might struggle and then you you're the podcast is saying you you create like an alter ego to better embody characteristics that you want to have in that position um by like kind of thinking of somebody mm. who embodies that for you already. Gotcha. Um, but I didn't know if that was like kind of being fake though, then to who That's you are was, as yeah. an authentic, like who you are as a person, because you're also being somebody else, kind of. Well, you can take inspiration and stuff from yeah. other people and cues and ideas and. That's probably That's a better word for it is the inspiration of who you're going to be. Right. Oh my god. Well, I, I was so, this all as a hindsight too, um, did you ever feel like you had to kind of put aside and be strong, stronger, stronger in certain person, like personality traits, uh, during the hard times of building the tiny home or losing your job or taking this trajectory that wasn't normal? Yeah, the Did you last ever feel like an alter ego effect a little bit or not really. I don't know about an alter ego. Well, just like <laughs> it was hard like just life in general through that time yeah. cuz I get very focused on one thing, especially like that, especially if it's a big project in our yard like I mean our backyard was a mess and I just 
turn everything off. Like I didn't even hardly ride my bike and that's like mm-hmm. my passion and love. And yeah, I just had to focus on that to get it done. Um, but then after it was done, it was like, well now what? So right. it was like definitely a dark time at that time when it was done just cause, well now what am I going to do? So, but working through that and it's been a lot better even the past few months, it's just been a learning experience because i mean i was working every day all day that i had time available and then it was just like done so